The production of this video was made possible by donors to the Orchestration Online Patreon Initiative. Please consider adding your support to the creation of free educational internet resources by visiting our Patreon page linked below. A frequent question I get from orchestrators is how to score horns in groups of six or eight players. Once the reasons behind the established four-horn scoring approach are understood, especially the third player as the middle high horn with the fourth as its low partner, then the next question becomes, how do the horns stack up when six players are available, or eight? And these are very fair questions because the answers are just as counterintuitive as the four-horn scoring approach might seem to developing orchestrators. If horns 1 and 3 are the high horns, and 2 and 4 the low horns, then does horn 5 become the lowest high voice, and 6 the lowest low voice? When in horn doubt, go to the Gustavs, Mahler or Holst. Both composers had standout approaches to scoring multiple horns. Richard Strauss is also exemplary in this regard. Let's start with Gustav Holst's scoring of the planets, because his approach is as direct and uncomplicated as possible. In Mars, he scores the horns as two staves of three, one, two, and three, and four, five, and six. This makes horn four into the middle high horn, leading a subsection of three, which you can see in many of the chorale-like passages. Sometimes both sets of three will be playing the same chords, with one doubling four, two doubling five, and so on. Or the two groups will play the same chord an octave apart, with 1 to 3 on the high chord and 4 to 6 on the low chord. When low horns have a featured line, then 5 and 6 become unison partners, as in the beginning statement which thickly doubles bassoons 1 and 2. In the four other movements with six horns, as there are only four horns in Mercury and Neptune, Holst spreads the horns in pairs over three staves. A very common approach is to score the first four horns in their traditional positions, but to place the bottom two horns below them in harmony, essentially making them into the dominant low voices. But not always. Sometimes each staff becomes an A2 position in a chordal arpeggio, which throws the traditional approach right out the window. And sometimes the positioning is just what it needs to be, like in the first massive tutti chord of Jupiter, in which the top and bottom staves double each other, and the middle staff plays in the center, or bottom, or top as need be. For the treatment of eight horns, let's see what the other great Gustav has to say. In Mahler's third symphony, he scores a chorale with doubling on each pitch, one and two on top, two and five middle high, four and seven middle low, and six and eight on the bottom. The effect of this strategy is to interlock the chords across the entire section, rather than letting the bottom four horns get disconnected from the top four. Of course, this also means that the two middle pitches are doubled by partners who are sitting more than two seats away from each other, so it's not without an element of risk, but it's still a fantastically satisfying sound. In other places, Mahler simply stacks the pitches according to seated pairs, with 1 and 2 on top through to 7 and 8 on the bottom. Or he'll have the odd-numbered players play a unison melody, while the even-numbered players hold down the harmony. Sometimes the three lowest and three highest players will play an octave melody, with the fourth and fifth players taking the middle voice. And occasionally all the players will combine for one massive push on a unison melody. This approach has been echoed by film composers in many scores, such as the theme to Star Trek Voyager, when you have the power, you might as well use it from time to time, so long as it doesn't drown out everything else in your orchestral universe. <laughs> 